So hello, uh, welcome to Chemicals. Today I am going to start on the new topic that is physical spectroscopy. Okay. So uh, actually we have made an opinion poll there, and there uh, you have voted for, for the physical chemistry, physical spectroscopy mouse. That's why I am going to start. So this will be a series of lecture. One by one I will talk all the molecular spectroscopy, like which is related to physical chemistry. Now. Now let me uh, write down the today's topic. Molecule. So, the molecular spectroscopy. Okay. So, before going to the molecular spectroscopy, you should know what is spectroscopy. Like what spectroscopy deals with. Spectroscopy is the interaction of light with a substance okay so interaction of light with a substance that the result whatever we are getting that is called spectroscopy now if your substance that is if that substance itself is an atom that time it will come atomic spectroscopy and if your substance is a molecule it will be called as molecular spectroscopy okay so whatever i'm writing interaction of light with the substance. Now, if substance is atom, then it will be called as atomic spectroscopy. I am not writing in total. And if it is molecule, then it will be molecular. So, in this case, we will talk about molecular spectroscopy. Now, uh, in molecular spectroscopy, if you know that it uh, consists of like rotational spectroscopy, vibrational spectroscopy, Raman spectroscopy, rotational Raman, vibrational Raman, and all these things. Even electronic spectroscopy also is there. But if you ever heard that translational, translational spectroscopy, you will not agree. So why? Why translational spectroscopy is not there? Because Whatever a, a, a molecule or a atom, it consists of like the three motion. It has the translational motion, it will have rotational motion, and it will have the vibrational motion. Now, for the other two motion, we have spectroscopy, but for the translational case, we don't have any spectroscopy. Why this is so? So, like if you know the, in any room temperature, okay, whatever the, due to the temperature, whatever exists. Due to that temperature, there will be some thermal energy. Okay, that is called as KBT, where KB is the Boltzmann constant. Now, this is the like energy it is always available for any molecule, any species, any substance, it is always available. So, whatever your temperature is, if you just calculate with the KB, KB is a phase value, it is a constant. So, that is the thermal energy available for anything any substance now but now, now now the case is when, or like for every system okay every every type of motion rotational motion or vibrational motion or translational motion if you just just like if you just uh, if you just compare it with some model system and like and uh, come up with your some energy states what is what, what will be the difference between two states what will be the difference between energy in two states so if you come across so whatever energy these are coming in case of translational that will be very less okay so translational case two level is so so close the spacings between two, the daily, it is even less than the KBT. Okay. So again, I am telling. So every case, like in translational motion and rotational motion and vibrational motion, due to that, there will be some constant and there will be like then due to the motion, you will have some energy states in your substance. Now, for the translational case, whatever the energy. The, like energy state that are very closely spaced okay so that are so closely spaced the difference between the two states the difference between the difference in energy between the two space 
that is even less than kvt now i am i have already told that kvt is that amount of energy that is always present now if that amount of energy is always present any molecule can't avoid that amount of energy so these are not these like these are almost the molecule can like whoever, whatever molecule is here it can go here and there but in case of rotational as the uh, difference is more like in this case if you talk about rotational or vibrational whatever that time the difference between a uh, difference in energy between two space the del e that is greater than kvt so one molecule cannot easily access the second molecule in like in normal normal so it, it need to have absorb some energy to go to this step but in this case as it is kv less than kvt so whatever the molecule it can like easily move uh, like move up and there so that's why if it is it don't have it will not it will have it won't have any selection it will not won't have any selection so and again space is space is no like the space are of no use so you will not get any type of kind of spectroscopy because in case of spectral if you go, go to the rotational or vibrational case that time what is happening there is a your excited state that is your ground state okay now whatever energy you are giving to this molecule it is absorbing and it is going to the excited state so excited state you know that is not that much stable so the molecule whoever is going there it will it will tend to decay its energy and it will come to the ground state so whenever it is coming to the ground state the energy whatever it gain it will be uh, released as a term of photon okay so as a term of so anything so that energy that is actually we are getting in spectroscopy we are dealing with that energy so that is a very basic thing that's why translational uh, spectroscopy is not present now uh, in molecular spectroscopy i will start with uh, today i will start with that rotation now rotational spectroscopy what is whatever the energy gap gap whatever model system we are need to choose that i will tell later like maybe in this video last segment or in the next video i want to prolong the video that's what i am telling so before going to the rotational spectroscopy you need to know some things very well so in rotational spectroscopy the basic selection rule or whatever you can call that is the molecule should have a permanent dipole moment the molecule whatever uh, under question whatever is going to give you the spectroscopic data that should have some permanent dipole moment okay so basic need that is permanent dipole moment i am writing is dp now the second is uh wait that is the main thing permanent dipole moment and as you know that as you, as you are seeing that is rotational spectroscopy so it is the motion of the that is a rotational motion related thing so for any rotational motion one thing is very needed that is moment of inertia so that is uh, just one thing i told already I'll leave it now and i'll tell the moment of inertia so what moment of inertia is moment of inertia is nothing so any rotational motion whenever a particle it is moving with some angular moment or whatever with a axis that time it will have some moment of inertia okay it is related to like you can say it is related to the mass mass related but it's not like the exactly mass so what moment of inertia is let me tell you so this is one of the one of the substance that are you are dealing so let this substance is moving around this axis okay like this just for the convenience now this this substance is consisting of very like an n number of particle let us say so from from this axis you need to know the distance of each particle so let us see this particular mass m1 and this has uh, distance r1 now whatever this particle this particle if it is m2 it is r2 it will have m3 and r3 it will have m4 and r4 like that so it, it will have some 
uh, in number of values. So I am telling this is taking this is m i i particle and r i. So if this is the case, then moment of inertia it is uh, symbolized as i. It will be in the m r one square plus m r two square plus m r sorry m one m two m three r three square dot 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 and so m i r i square. So number of particle whatever is there if there is n number of particle so you need to uh, you need to square the distance and multiply with the mass of that particle and you need to sum up the whole thing that will give you the moment of inertia okay so now if you see the whatever distance we are taking that is from the axis this axis whatever axis we are choosing or whatever axis this particle is moving uh, revolving so this axis is very important in case of moment of inertia so uh, one more thing you can uh, easily write down this thing as like this i is equal to summation of m i r i square now from i is equal to 1 to n so n number particle that is that is the equation okay so as i told that in this case this is very important to know about your axis about which axis your particle is moving okay so any molecule this is a convenient any molecule should have three axis of symmetry three axis for revolving okay that are called as i a i b and i c because the axis is like the i'm just telling one that this is a this is b and c so there will be three axis and for each like any molecule there should be a, this, this, that should consist three axis and along each axis there will be one one moment of inertia that's what i'm telling so if this is particle this is at one axis i'm telling again one more axis so then again that time whatever from this unit drag alongside from this this is a and this is b so i a will be your summation of some m i which is uh, and r i which is from a plus again it will be m i and r i which is from b so whatever how number of uh, axes is there that many moment of inertia will be there so now i'm telling this is a uh, this is the uh, convention that each molecule it will have three axes of symmetry because uh, you can say three axes is there that means because of a 3d molecule any molecule whatever you are know so that is 3d molecule it will have three axes but the name that are very much fixed they have got i a and b and c and uh, for the each axis for the a axis it will have ia for the b it will have ib for the c it will have ic now now we have got ia ib and ic so now this in this case i i b i c you need to know like there are also some convention is there so which will be c which will be b and which will be a that you need to know okay so which will be c which will be b and which will be a now i'm telling for any molecule just uh, a a i am taking one molecule so i am this is a a this is a b and this is a c whatever i don't know what should be the uh, what should be the c what should be the b i am just saying like this is but they are telling c will be that axis along which the moment of inertia that is ic should be maximum okay so c is that axis along which that ic should be maximum okay so i have taken this is as a if i will take this is as c then c if a and this two a molecule if this are point mass so from this axis a has r is equals zero if this is point mass not look like this it should like um, i have given some specificity if this is this is the case okay and this is your a axis whatever the bonding bonding that is actually you are taking as a now it will have 
zero R. So M, whatever M is, M A R, that is equals actually zero. So it will always the total will be zero. I is zero. So this is the zero means it is it will be minimum. So you cannot choose this as C because it is giving I C. It will give I C as zero. So I C will be that axis. Which uh, along with that I C should be maximum, okay? And I C I A sorry, I A will be that which should should be the minimum. This is the convention, okay? If you if you follow that, uh, there's a very good book called Holas Holas High Resolution Spectroscopy. There actually there it is mentioned the convention. So I C should be maximum, I A should be minimum, and in case of B, they are telling B should be perpendicular. I am writing as this is as perpendicular, perpendicular to both A and C. Okay. So again, let, let me uh, tell you this this three thing for you because this is a very basis of your whatever rotation spectroscopy. So there are three axes, C, B, and A. Whatever the uh, uh, axis will give the highest moment of inertia along it, that will be C. Whatever the axis will give the lowest moment of inertia, that will be A. And B will be perpendicular to both A and C. So now let us check for this molecule. What should be your I? What should be your uh, A? Sorry, what should be not I? What should be A? What should be B? And what should be C? Now. Okay, this is a molecule. I am not giving any name. So this is the uh, molecule. Now, C I told it should be maximum, and it should be minimum. So for minimum, if you take like, what should be the axis that will give you minimum? So if you take this axis as your, uh, this axis axis as your uh, C A, A axis, that will give you minimum. Why? Because I A that time I am taking this is as A, so I A will be M something whatever M, and that R square. Now if this charge, these are point charge, point sorry not charge, point mass, then it will have no distance from the axis. So no distance means R is equal to zero, whatever square. So I will give I A will be zero. So this axis would be your I A. Okay. Now C will should have maximum, and B and B should be perpendicular to A and C both. Now there is only one choice you can choose that if you are choosing this as B, so this as C, then you need to choose perpendicular means this axis. So this axis is your B. Now if you Uh, if you follow this, from this axis C, this distance, this is R also, this is R. So from this axis, distance between two is R because this is exactly bisecting the uh, bond between the two atom. Now again, this also, I am just drawing it like just follow it as this. This is your B axis. Now again, this axis also bisecting this molecule is exactly same distance. So that's why I B will be equals to I C because M R R square plus M R square and again in case of C or B and also that will be same. So uh, it will be I B is equal to I C. Now you, uh, you just uh, you just check it is following or not. I A it is having minimum. I C it is having maximum. They are not telling B should have some intermediate value. They are telling I A should be minimum. I C should be maximum. And I B just need to be the axis of B and need to be perpendicular to A and C, so it is following everything. And this is the linear molecule. Okay, I I am about to tell you the difference of the molecules according to the I A I B and C I C. But while explaining, I have already told linear. So it's the, let's not worry about that. I will talk uh, talk everything again. So.
Now, now I, I already talked about what will be IA, IB, IC. Now, we, I have three axes. So, like the momentum inertia about the three axes, whatever the value we are getting. So, according to that uh, value we are getting, molecules has been classified into some four, uh, some, uh, some four classification, okay, that has been given. So, what are the first? One is linear, second is symmetric top, okay. I will discuss everything, symmetric top, third one is spherical top and fourth one is asymmetric top, okay. But depending upon the IA, IB and IC value from the molecule, like the trend of IA, IB and IC value, the molecule has been classified into this four, uh, four division, okay. Now linear, as we already know, so I will discuss one by one. So now first the linear. Linear I already discussed. So what is the case for linear? Linear is from the name it is you are getting this is linear. So it will have one axis like this, one axis like this, and one axis like this. So what will be your IA? That will be IA. That will be IC. That will be IB. Whatever like. You can put this also IC, this will also, also IB. Now the condition that is IA is equal to 0 and IB and IC it will be equal and it will be greater than 0, whatever. Because there is some distance. R, R1, R, whatever. Okay. So then I discuss, that's why I am not discussing this one. So this is a linear. Now what is the case for symmetric top? Okay, symmetric top. A symmetric molecule, top molecules has been classified into two sections again. One is prolate, one is oblate. Okay. So at first I will talk what are the condition of prolate and oblate. Then I will discuss it with a example. With an example, okay. So this there is a trick I used to follow to uh, remember this thing like that is O and that is P just remember this so O P if you go through the alphabet so N N O P that like this so O is coming first and P is coming late so is the first then P is coming late. So, the conditions are, I am writing here, I will tell what is the trick later, okay. Okay, so if you see this, there is IA is less than something IB equals IC in case of prolate I have written and in case of oblate I have written IC is greater than IA and IB so if you look carefully there is two I two I which are greater than one I and there is one I which is greater than two so greater, just look at the greater there is two is greater like I am telling so two I are greater than and here one i is greater okay so o comes first so that is obviously one will go with o in case of oblate and p comes late so two will go with prolate that's the thing okay so if you know the alphabet o and p and again the digit also one and two so these are going with this so this is just a trick it's not like that's why it is going so in case of prolate IB and IC will have higher value than IA in case of oblate IA and IB like IC will have higher value than IA and IB now if you uh, carefully look I already told IC will have highest and IA will have lowest so obviously every time IC will have higher so now whenever 2 is having greater value than 1 
that means IB and IC will be equal. And whenever one is greater than the other two, that means one is greater, whatever is greater that is IC, that is fixed. So I and IB will be fixed. That is the case. Okay. So I will tell this again because uh, it will uh, help you to remember the thing. So these are the two cases. Okay. So let me check one example for product. So if you uh, you know I think that aluminium molecule. Okay. This is adding. Now in this case if you go, this will be one of your axis. And this will be again. This will be also. Now this axis, okay, this axis is going through the three molecules. So due to this three molecule, you will not have any I. So if you know, like if you if you see that it will give the least moment, least uh, moment of inertia. That's why I need to put this I. And these two, like from these two is actually intersecting this. This is the main point. So from this point, the distance of these two or distance of this hydrogen, from this point it is equal. Like not I am not telling equal like. From this point, whatever the this axis will give the moment of inertia, and this axis will give the same moment of inertia. So I can choose any one as IB and any one as IC. So what is the condition I am getting? That time I was zero, but it is not zero. Why? Because this molecule has some distance from this axis. So due to this, we will get due to the hydrogen molecule, we will get some amount, but IB and IC will have higher value. So IA, IB. Equals IC. So two is greater than one. That means it will be a product. And exactly this question has been asked in CSIR. I think uh, 2018 June or 2017 December. I actually I don't for, I, I actually forgot. So aluminium molecule is a uh, is an example of product. Okay. And uh, whatever the choosing a momentum in uh, inertia axis, whatever the choosing of symmetry axis, I am telling. One more uh, tip here that is, if a uh, axis, if a uh, axis is going through the most number of atom, okay, most number of atoms, that is called as principal. Axis of symmetry. Okay. So what they're telling? If a if an axis is going through the most number of atoms, that is called as principal axis of symmetry. And uh, like for the definition you are getting that most number of atoms. So whatever number of atoms it is going through, due to that atoms, you will not get any contribution in your moment of inertia. So there is a very fair chance, and that, that is a that is the actual case that at principal axis of symmetry it will be denoted as I A. Okay, so this is actually one of the thing. So symmetry top told already. Now, uh, if I go with some molecular or BF three, you can see a BF three has this structure okay now for bf3 you will have this condition you can easily follow by your own that bf3 will have ia is equals ib and ic okay so you just uh, choose your axis by this and one axis will be this that will have the high uh, you can see easily well okay i'm i'm, I'm showing you this is B. So it has a C3 axis. If you know the symmetry thing, so it, it has a C3 axis because due to this axis, this 3 can uh, rotate, uh, 3 can rotate and it can come. But when it, if it uh, rotates, then again the exactly indistinguishable form will get. So this there is one axis. Now if you see this axis is going only through one atom. 
But whereas if you choose this axis or this axis or this axis, whatever, this three are same axis. You are, you are, you know, you know, because it is going always through two atom. So I am not taking everything. This three are equivalent axis. I think you have got this thing because this is your BF three. So whatever, if you are choosing this axis as your one of your axis, so. Choosing these and these are the same. These are indistinguishable. So one axis is there. That I am writing is this, which is the perpendicular of the plane, plane, plane of this molecule. Because this is a planar molecule. And one more axis you can choose as this. Now, what about this? This will have higher value because from this axis all the three f are participating. So I will have the higher value. And from the picture, it is difficult to understand that uh, that these axes distance are different. It is actually you are getting, but these axes as well as these axes, it will give the same. Like it will give the same value. If you just go through the vector and if you just choose one of angle and write down the distance of this to this and distance of this to this, whatever the I B and I C, it will come same. Okay, I am not discussing because it will take longer time. But if you really need how it is coming, I B and I C is same. You can comment down before and uh, comment down below, and then I will come up with that solution again. Okay, so that's not a problem. But let's uh, finish this thing uh, early because it will take lo longer time. So this is oblate. We talked about prolate. We talked about oblate. So here, what is this? I A is greater than I B and I C. So one is greater. That means that will be oblate. Now these are the symmetric top. So there are much more example of any, any each prolate and oblate. So alkene like so alkene is a oblate. Benzene sorry benzene is a oblate. And you can see that C H three C L. Okay, that will be a example of prolate. Now. Coming to the third, third division, third uh, third part. What is that? That is spherical top. So spherical top is the same, that molecule. Like from the name itself, you can see it will have some spherical like sphere type, uh, sphere type structure. Okay. So that it will have some high symmetry. You, you know that sphere has a very high symmetry. So, if you have gone through the some group theory, and also we have made a one video, so there we have uh, there we have discussed that high symmetry groups that are tetrahedral and octahedral. So, which are whichever uh, molecules are from these tetrahedral and octahedral point, point group that will have high symmetry and that are actually a spherical uh, example of spherical top. So, if you go through SF six, okay, so is So these are this is the plane you can choose. So this plane, like this total plane, and if you just join this, it is forming a sphere-like thing. Again, in case of CH four also, you can see. So this is again forming some sphere kind of. So these are high symmetry case tetrahedral and octahedral point group mainly. So these are forming like spheric sphere type thing. So this type of highly symmetric molecule has been called as spherical top. Okay, but if you just change one to CL, it will not because the because the electronic is it's not like that just attaching. I am telling the electronic density, the electron density around it is uh, around the molecule. It is very much symmetric and it is uh, similar. So throughout the molecule, it has been dispersed and it is forming a spherical electron density. And in this case also, but whenever you are putting just one Cl instead of H here, you just see, then it is it will not give the same electron density. It will have some because chloride will try, uh, bring that electron towards him and it will distort somehow. So that time, you know that CHCl is an example of prolate. So it's just an example of prolate. It's a, it's not uh, becoming some spherical top. So whenever it has a high high symmetry, 
that time it is called as spherical top in case of tdr1 so the spherical first spherical top the uh, equation the, the relation of i i b i c is i will be equals to i b will be equals to i c okay i a will be equals to i b will be equals to i c so we have got that i a is equals 0 and i b i c equals whatever get up then that is for linear from symmetrical drop from spherical drop the three thing is over now the last that is asymmetric drop so for the name itself you can see that is asymmetric drop means it won't have any relation actually it won't have any relation of I, I, B and I, C. So for any a molecule, if I is not equals to I, B is not equals to I, C, that time this type of molecules are called asymmetric top. So you can easily see that is H2O. So this, around this, and around this, and whatever, around this, if you choose this 3 as your axis, it will, it will have no connection at all. Okay. So that's a, that's what it, it is an example of this. A, like a many more example you can easily find found out for that for that asymmetric top so I, I will not talk about the detail about asymmetric top so whatever molecule is not coming into these three category spherical uh, asymmetric top and linear that are asymmetric top okay so uh, question has been directly asked from this topic like uh, this molecule I, I already told you the proline uh, uh, sorry aline aline is an example of which type of molecule symmetric top or asymmetric top so you know that is a proline that means it's a symmetric top again uh, these are the main thing i want to talk about so they have given four molecule and ask what what uh, among these which one will be rotational active so h2 n2 carbon monoxide co2 h2 n2 carbon monoxide and co2 okay so they have asked among these four, which one will be rotation active? So, the very first, like very uh, first of this video, I told that molecule will be rotationally active, which will have permanent dipole moment. So, if you just draw the structure HH, that will be so for three for this this molecule, it will have no. Dipole moment, no dipole moment, no dipole moment, only this molecule has dipole moment. So this will be the answer. Okay. I uh, I'll stop here and I'll meet you on the next video. And that will be basically depend upon result that is basically based upon the energy separation, the spacings, what is the rotational constant and all things. So okay, so keep in touch and thank you for watching. Please, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe our channel and spread it among your friends and juniors, okay? So, thank you.